Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We are approaching the finish line of day one of week two of season two of the Hearthstone Legendary Series brought to you by ESL. Once again, I'm Cameron Camdozer Reed, filling in for Frodan, joined by the incomparable TJ Asimo Cutie Sanders. Now, our last match of the day is going to be Trump versus Roger. Seems like on paper a really evenly matched game when you just look at both of the players. Mm -hmm. Now, do the decks that we've seen so far give any more insight into who should be favored here? Um, it's hard to say because neither of these guys has a lineup that stands out above uh, the other. They both brought like a mix of decks that are strong and like one deck that's arguable. Mm -hmm. um, like Trunk brought both Paladin and Mage, who, I mean, nobody will argue that those are strong decks right now. Right. But then he brought Warrior, which some people are a little bit on the fence about Warrior in the current meta. Um, on the other hand, Roger bought, brought Rogue and Druid, mm -hmm. which are great. Everybody will agree that they're great decks. And then he brought Warlock. It's a very traditional handlock, mm -hmm. which, again, some people are on the fence about right now. Um, so I, I don't necessarily would give either player uh, an advantage based on first their lineups alone. But mm -hmm. matchups are going to play a big part. Yeah. And the first matchup we're going to see is Trump's Freeze Mage. Versus the pretty standard sort of oil rogue was from it, Roger. It was a mech. Oh, I'm sorry, mech did I say it was mech mage? Yeah. I I, I got it confused because in my mind I remembered seeing water the water elemental. Yeah. Yeah, but it was absolutely the mech mage. So, who do you think this favors? Because mage. <laughs> you think it favors the mage? <laughs> yeah. The rogue definitely has some ways to mix it up early though. Yeah. Between backstabs, SI seven, just dagger. Mm -hmm. uh, deadly Poison definitely has ways to keep the mage from getting out of hand in that early game. Yeah, but that's ideally. Mm -hmm. um, and the mech mage doesn't really need an explosive start to just run away with the game. <laughs> There's so many cards that mech mage has, and especially Trump, who takes in the water elemental, which makes it tougher. Yeah. That can just win the game. Yeah. Snow chug it early on. If you don't have an answer for it, or if you hide it behind an Anoyotron, really hard to deal with. You ramp up quickly with a mech warper, get an early pile of the shredder out, force the, the rogue to use their face, use their weapons to attack in, get them within burst range. Pressure is oil rogue's um, like weakest point. Uh, they fall to pressure all the time, and it's one of the things that you have to make sure you do when you want to beat an oil rogue. And mech mage just does that naturally. Yeah, absolutely. Although it can at times be really difficult to put that consistent pressure mm -hmm. on the rogue because again, sometimes I'm shocked by the plays they're able to pull off. Yeah. In order to clear my board. Yeah. You know, so we'll see how it goes. We should be jumping into the mulligan phase pretty soon, so we'll get maybe a better idea. But I think the early game is really maybe more so than in other matches going to determine how this one plays out. Yeah, and with Mech Mage, a lot of times that's just how it is. With aggressive decks in general, right. um, if you make it through the first four turns with a like a board that goes unscathed, oh, or yeah. you just get a snow trigger out and that's it. Right, right. <laughs> it's like... What what is a what is the rogue gonna do if they don't have answers to the first couple drops that you put out? Yeah, the unanswered snow chugger, especially like you said with uh, teching in the water elemental mm -hmm. versus a weapon class, yeah, can be absolutely devastating. Uh, there are times where even there's this really juicy trade for the snow chugger, but it's like mm, no, I still think the right play is to just prevent four of the cards that are in your deck exactly. from being useful at all this entire game. And also. Um, I mean, we haven't seen it, but there is a potential that Trump has Blinktron. That's true. And even though Blinktron is not the best, sometimes you can destroy a right. better weapon and was, replace it with a worse weapon. That's exactly what I was going to say. Or you might give them a Gorhal. Yeah, you could do Either that. Either or. <laughs> you could do that. That would make for a pretty intense blade flurry. Yes, it would. <laughs> An oiled Gorhal. Oiled Gorhal. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. This is not a great start again. No, absolutely is not. Hmm, most likely just a hero power pass on turn two, depending on the top deck from Trump, which feels so rough when you're playing the Mech Mage. And That's your time to set up that tempo, to get that insane oh, board early. When you're a rogue and you see just a hero power on turn two, you're like, oh, okay. Yep. This game is in the bag. Coin SI agent. Yeah. Easy peasy. Ah, actually, and any merit, though, to just daggering 
to yeah. save the coin as more combo potential later. Yeah. Even in, it counts as a spell for your Violet Teacher, maybe. Uh, I like SI7 Agent here. You're putting a creature on the board to match up to whatever he's going to put out next turn. That's true. Yeah, because next turn then he's going to have a spider tank on the board. There's that water elemental. See what he's going to be able to pull off with that. Of course, two saps for the rogue. Yeah. The water elemental probably feels like a pretty good sap target to me. I might just sap the spider tank. Right now? Yeah. Hmm. So... Presuming you sap the spider tank, then. Are there better targets? I guess, yeah, you might be right. The only other target, really, I can think of for a sap would be to get an Annoyatron out of the way. Mm -hmm. That might be preventing you from one of your crazy combo turns. Yeah. Um, he, he doesn't go ahead and do it, but there, if he had a good turn play for the next turn, mm -hmm. that would be able to deal with the spider tank then yes, that's something that you would almost automatically go for is a sap because you're buying yourself some time. He'd be able to just like dagger up in the situation like if he had an oil. Right. But uh, he realizes that really his options aren't going to improve next turn. Mm -hmm. He's still going to have to dagger up and kill that eventually. Yeah. Choosing not to sap the water elemental. He'll never be able to use that dagger again. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, because if you look at the cards he has in hand, other than sap, he doesn't really have any hard removal. This water elemental at worst is going to trade pretty effectively. Yeah. He can just fireball, attack face. What yep. I mean, he might not want to do that because he thinks he may need that reach for mm -hmm. later on. But that's the best way to take care of it right now. He could also just freeze it, but then you're giving him one ones. Right. Yeah. Kind of messy. You don't really want to have to deal with that. But you are building up a little bit bigger I of a board. Wonder. Okay. Mirror Entity. I like it. I mean, the best uh, minion, or the worst minion that Roger can give him is this Farseer. Yeah, it's Curvilicious also. Where's Fireball, you're floating a mana. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Deadly Poison just for one charge. Oh, just that's to the get worst. rid of the, the Water Elemental. Oh, that geez. is the worst. Yeah, you're hoping that the Deadly Poison will at least go two for one or get two charges Yeah, for a Blade Flurry, something along those lines. And then he's going to play the Snow Chugger, and he's going to be like forced to sap it almost. Feel obligated to sap it. Yeah, I think so. Just be able to attack the following turn. I mean, without a oil or a poison in his hand, maybe not, but the perpetual freeze, the never-ending freeze. <laughs> Winter is coming. Yeah. <laughs> all. all right, Trump. Dropping as many of his cards as he can, essentially, on that turn. And if you've Lotheb here... Huh? Hmm. I think he needs to Azure. I think what you need at this point as the Rogue is some sort of answers. Mm -hmm. to this board at this point. None of these really are. The Snow Chugger is just going to hit him in the face. Um, and it, he's looking at six damage right now. It's that pressure that you were talking about earlier. I wonder if I snap, uh, if I sap the Snow Chugger instead of... Yeah. Mad Scientist is a big tempo play, sapping Mad Scientist, because he could trade in the Mad Scientist really easily mm -hmm. and then make it so that his next creature, Lothab or Azure Drake, gets stolen, which is a big deal. Right. He's just going to play it again. Yeah. But it buys him a turn. Oh, wow. Oh, man. All right. This is rough. So you probably have to loathe it to prevent yourself from getting wrecked next turn by double fireball. Yep. And he takes out the snow trucker finally, but that snow trucker is already done. Some pretty decent work. Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest, I would just Mech Warper freeze the load them and just keep pounding. Yeah, sure. Because that's uh, he, he's got a fireball in his hand. All he needs to do is connect, be able to connect five damage the following turn. That's right. Which that load that doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Right. I mean, the best thing that Roger has in hand right now to answer that load up is a sap. Yeah. But even then, you're still dead to the fireball. Yep. 
See Azure Drix, see if he can fish something out and get a nice fan of knives. Nope. Clears a little bit of damage. Doesn't prevent lethal, though. All right. That's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen, for game one. Yeah. And, I mean, that water elemental went such a long way in that early game. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Roger played that about as, as, about, about as well as he could have. Yeah. A couple of points where he might have been able to go a different ro route with his plays, but... Uh, that's such a tough, tough match to win, and Trump played that really well. Yeah, absolutely. And Trump just always playing incredibly solid. Yeah, Hearthstone. Never know? really too risky. Right. Never any plays that are just utterly mind blowing and yeah. like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he pulled that off. Mm -hmm. um, but always just very respectable, very solid play mm -hmm. out of Trump. Just sort of always knows what the safest right decision is to make and always seems to make it. And that sort of play style really fits Mech Mage. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do fancy things with Mech Mage. Yeah. Just if you're playing Mech Mage to do fancy things, get over it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he knows what it does and he plays it effectively. Texts in some cards like Water Elemental that improve his matchup dramatically against Warrior, against Rogue. And, uh, yeah, just really solid play. But Mech Mage is out of the way. Yeah. Same thing happened in the last last series. Still got to find wins uh, with the Paladin, with the Warrior. Right. Um, and there's a Druid floating out there for Roger. Mm-hmm. So. so the Warrior probably has – there's still the Rogue in there. Mm -hmm. So do you try to go for the Paladin and get another win and then just have three chances in a row potentially if you're Trump? With the warrior, hoping to get that rogue, so you just get that win. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, if you can pick the the paladin here and get a win over, like, say the druid, mm -hmm. just paves the way for your warrior. Right. Um, or if you can take the paladin here and get a win, oh, really over anything, it just paves the way for that warrior. So uh, he he's in a he's in a pretty good spot. It's it's not like last year standing though. In last year's standing, if you won the first match, you had an obvious advantage. Right. Because you had the counter advantage. You had the turn, your opponent would counter your deck, then you'd counter their deck. Mm -hmm. Your opponent would counter your deck, then you'd counter their deck for the win. Sure. The Conquest is not like that. It gives the, the losing player also a chance to just completely come back because Trump's still got to find wins with those other decks. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see what Roger decides. If he's going to stick with... The Rogue, one more time. The Rogue has a lot of really good matchups just in the overall uh, meta right now, but he does have the option also to go with his own Druid or Warlock in response to either the Paladin or the Warrior. Yeah, I mean, I, I talked about the matchups earlier, but Trump actually has a really fantastic lineup against Rogue. Mm -hmm. uh, but Paladin, Mech Mage, and Warrior all... Well, Paladin not, but if you play a more control-heavy style of Paladin... You still have a chance. Mm -hmm. um, but two out of three in Conquest, being yeah. strong in two out of three of the matchups. That's really great. It's great. It's yeah. about as good as you can hope for. You're look, you, on average, you want them to be good against one of the three decks. Right, right. Because then it, if you think you're the better player, you'll come, come out on top. Uh, but I think Trump definitely has the advantage in that situation. Now, I am getting word that Trump is still trying to decide what deck to bring. Oh, wow. And always kind of the calculating player, always trying to think what are all the possibilities. Ah! But he has made up his mind, and it is going to be the warrior. Roger's switching it up a little bit too, going to the druid. And I think Trump, he realizes that he's up against druid, and he wanted to dodge the druid mm -hmm. at all costs with the warrior. Yeah. And uh, pick up... He, he, <laughs> Look at his yeah, face. <laughs> he, he went warrior because he wanted to try and sneak a win mm -hmm. with the warrior. Right now against non-Druid. Right, right. But didn't work out for him. Roger read him like a book. Yeah, perfectly. So we'll see. We'll see if Trump is able to pull some sort of a shenanigans out of his hat to take the 2-0 lead. Yeah. This matchup is rough, but it's not impossible. Right. Uh, Warriors, um, they used to be sort of the epitome of consistency. They used to be sort of in Druids with that, thrown in that bundle with the the druids where they don't really have any terrible matchups uh, but they don't really have any over the top great matchups uh, but nowadays there's a little more variance they can just have dead draws uh, they have to they're forced to use their removal early and they just mm -hmm. don't draw into any of the threats yeah um, but they don't really have much room for error right here and I can already tell that Trump's hands not that great no it's looking pretty rough and if, if Roger's able to pick up either a Wild Growth or an Innervate, too, 
His actually isn't looking that bad. You see the big Dr. Boom scenarios and Ancient Allure in hand. And early it's really easy to say, oh, dead cards for a long time. Looks okay. Maybe Trump can survive. But the way... Well, that was no help. Anyway, as I was saying, the way the <laughs> Druid can curve out can just be punishing. This is a really clogged hand, though. Uh, giving the warrior room to maneuver mm -hmm. is what's going to lose Druid the game. Because they need to leverage the combo in the mid, mid-ish to late-ish game to be able to force the warrior to play really reactively and right. really defensively. But this really just... Um, Trump's probably feeling confident right now. Whatever comes down next turn, he can... He'd be able to cool Taskmaster's armor smith and be able mm -hmm. to deal with it in that way. So... Other than the shade, of course. Yeah, having a slow hand is actually not that great. Because now, with the shield slam, Trump's going to be able to deal with whatever comes out next yeah. turn. Really rough. It's not a good druid start. No, no, it's definitely not. He's missing. There's the innervate, though. Innervate coin, Dr. Innervate Boom. Innervate coin, D. Boom. I was, see, this is what I was just talking about. All it takes is one of those ramp cards, and all of a sudden, there's a tremendous amount of pressure. Yeah, but there's a Dr. Boom waiting on the other end. Or Big Game Hunter big waiting game on the hunter. other end for that Dr. Boom. That's true. Go ahead and swing with the shade, too. Hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, it seems like a pretty clean play right now. You just uh, probably, well, shoot, it can be really tricky. Dealing with boom bots is always, I'm never sure what the correct sequencing is when I've got boom bots to deal with. Yeah, I think he needs to trade into the shade here with his armor smith. And then, right. And then, or, this is risky. See, because I was just going to say, you want to get greedy to get the extra armor. From the boom bot? But if your armorsmith your, dies. But if your armorsmith dies, now you've got the shade and no real way to deal with it. Yeah. I think armorsmith into shade, then trade into one of the boom bots, then BGH, I think is the best course of action. Trump oh. getting greedy. Here we go. Is he going to get punished for it? Nope. No. Worked out exactly how I think he wanted it to. Did Maybe face would have been slightly more favorable there, but will, he does get two armor out of it. Will he get even greedier? <laughs> and kill the, for the second, second boom bot. bot instead of the shade? Yeah. I don't think so. Uh, he actually might be shield slamming uh, here. This is uh, a potential as well. And, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Whoa. That boom bot could have just ruined that play. Whoa, Trump. Wow, look I, at the smile on his face, too. He knows I, it. Th that's a misplay. If I, I think that's a misplay because if that boom bot hits for three... Yeah, and you shield slam without realizing, or you don't, you can't shield slam anymore. Trump looks like a deer caught in headlights <laughs> right now. He's like, "Wow, no, he does That could have sucked. <laughs> he just looks like a guy who's real grateful. <laughs> yeah, the like, yeah, I'm Trump. What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> Hashtag never lucky. Not necessarily hey, look, he just, so. He just gave himself a slap across the yeah. face. Yeah. He's like, bad Trump. <laughs> <laughs> don't make those plays. Well, it paid off. For him, he got greedy. We'll say <laughs> this: I've seen cleaner ways to deal with Doctor Boom. Yeah. Oh man. But it wound up working so effectively. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're when you're playing the game of my threat, it. your threat against Warrior, mm -hmm. most likely not going to come out on top. Yeah. All right, so Shredder hero power here. The Warriors. Just waiting to see what he can get out of that Ancient Allure next turn. Yeah, Warriors had a chance to just sit back and armor up. I mean, he's at almost 40 health right now. Mm-hmm. Combo doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Boom. Coming down, making his impact. Roger's sitting there like... Ooh. He dealt with my Dr. Boom so inefficiently, but he's still ahead. But he's still way ahead. What went wrong? No wild growth. Or mm -hmm. anything to play before turn three. That's what went wrong, Roger. Yep. All right. So Dr. Boom coming down, yeah, kind of forces him out of the ancient lore play. Mm -hmm. 
which is unfortunate because he definitely wants to start cycling through that deck and get to some some more pressure that he can start to try to whittle down that health pool of the warrior a little bit to set up the combo. Yeah. He can actually guarantee a... Um, he can shield time his own Sylvanas here to steal Roger Sylvanas. I think that's the best line of play here. That's a shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, guaranteed Dr. Boom or something <laughs> is yeah. going to kill what pops out of... Yeah, he can throw the Dr. Boom into the Pilot Shredder, yeah. um, kill it with Shield Maiden or Boom Bop, whichever, and mm -hmm. then shield time your own Sylvanas to steal his. I think that seems really reasonable. It's pretty nice. Even no, never mind. I was gonna say you can even throw in a, a cruel taskmaster for good measure, but only eight mana. <laughs> yeah. Getting a little bit ahead of myself. Just a little short of that option. Yeah. He's he's thinking through all of his options right now, but I don't really see any better plays. Otherwise that Sylvanas would be too hard to deal with. Mm-hmm. You can't throw down your own Sylvanas, because then he could just trade into your Doctor Boom. Right. Oh man, I don't I really don't like Sludge Belcher. Yeah, I don't know how much I agree with that either. I mean I guess he's then again, it's He's just the safe, sort of consistent play. He's still going to wind up showing 13. He's also putting him at 9. Yeah, so maybe, exactly. Maybe I got a little bit ahead of myself. Yeah. And Druid, not one of those classes that's particularly capable of pulling off its own cheeky, I'll kill my own Sylvanas kind of plays. Yeah. All right, so he can... What keeps him alive here? Ancient of Lore for heal, obviously not. Popping something amazing out of that. Oh! Hey, a little spell damage. So he can now... He can swipe Wrath for, for two on the Sludge and then steal the what's left of Dr. Boom with his Sylvanas. Mm-hmm. Or he's going to do it this way. Either way is the same outcome. Right. So, I mean, this... Real nice. Wait a second. Okay. He wants yeah, he wants a healthier Doctor Boom. Yeah, that's nice. And reduces him in the armor. See, this is yeah, where and reduces the armor. This exactly. is where stealing the Sylvanas last turn from Trump would have been an infinitely Oof. better play in that situation. Right, prevents all of this. Yeah. So now instead of being in a position where he had a Doctor Boom and a Sylvanas on his board, um, now he's he's still in a good spot just because. I don't know anymore. Yeah, I mean, what can he do? He can put down his own Sylvanas here. Hope it trades into Dr. Boom. Doesn't feel that great. Can shield slam Dr. Boom is a start there, and then maybe just drop the Acolyte and uh, Taskmaster the Acolyte even yeah. to see what he picks up. Yeah. See, this is an awkward spot because he went for the damage before he drew into his finisher. Mm -hmm. And so now... He's at that point where he just doesn't have the damage to keep going for it. Right. Because there's so many things that a, a Druid can do to just stop things in his tracks. Another Sludge Belcher, Druid of the Claw, Ancient Lore Heal. Alright, so just to armor up Shield Slam on Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still in a pretty good spot. But now, the Druid can pretty cleanly and safely just sort of put down his Ancient Allure, I think. Or maybe even, since he's so low, do you think Scenarius is the right way to go with the two taunts? Yeah. Because Ancient Allure, if he heals, uh, it's basically just ineffective. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess either way. Because either way, you're blocking five damage. Right. Whether, and Scenarius is a bigger body. Yeah. So either healing five damage or blocking five damage what's on the board. Okay. Draw See what first. he draws, yeah. Not much help right now when you're trying to finish the game. No. <laughs> it's really problematic. He can play Sylvanas, but then mm. it's it's got the potential to get Keeper and then just trade it in for the Scenarius. Yeah. What? So it's a little bit weird. Yeah, Baron Geddon. Baron Geddon would probably be the most valuable play, potentially, presuming Scenarius has to run in. You get three for one. Yeah. But remember, that is just a token Trent as well. It's not exactly a card. And either way, that Trent's going to die. Yeah. Because he would ha trade into it anyway with the Cruel Taskmaster, because it would die to the Baron Geddon. Looks like he's going to go with Sylvanas. 
Yeah. An ominous gentleman just walked behind Roger. <laughs> Brushed him on the shoulder. <laughs> Go get him, buddy. And another. Hmm. It's still scary. Yeah. You, I was ha you have to deal with the Sylvanas, but at the same time, you're almost dead. Yeah. So if he steals your, your scenarios there... You don't have much that you can throw out either just as a body that you feel great giving him. Yeah. He needs to dig for a keeper here. Yeah. Um, so wild growth first. Maybe into Ancient of Lore with... No, I don't know. Hmm. I think he's got to take the second wild growth too if he doesn't get it right now. Yeah. Sludge Belcher That is, buys him a little time. Yeah. You play the Shade as well. Yeah. Fill up his mana and take out the armor smith. Probably, yeah. W it weaken his own scenarius. Now, he's seen one shield slam, too. Mm -hmm. So, is there any merit to just going to the face and removing all of the armor? Probably. Well, no, no, no. Because... Well, because, I mean, the thing that you're... That I'm thinking here... Oh, yeah. okay. He, I, I, I like weakening his own... So Oh my goodness. This is incredible Baron Geddon because he can clear the shade and steal the scenarios because oh, his Sylvanas right. is going to be a two health. Will be a two health. Whoa! Unreal. That's insane. He's got to see it. Yeah, I don't know if he even... W yeah, I, he's going to want it. Wow. Very nice. And he doesn't even have to waste the second charge here. Yeah, I was going to say, just hang on to the weapon. Yeah. Armor up. He does have a death bite. I don't know. No. Maybe he wants that. Maybe he values that. Yeah, Trump's always trying to get as much value as he possibly can. <laughs> that one yeah. two's going to die anyway when you lay down Baron yeah. Geddon. Why burn the charge on it? Exactly. Oh, man. Oh, boy. That's scary. And he here we have another situation where he's going to have to draw into something in order to prevent death next turn. He does have BGH. But BGH isn't enough. He can BGH. No, he's got the weapon, exactly. BGH, Ancient of Lore, heal. Uh, would keep him alive. Yeah. But barely. Yeah, just barely. And then he's got that Death's Bite to follow up as well. <laughs> yeah, just a naked Gromish would win here. Mm, Acolyte of Pain, though. That's yeah, I mean, you might as well probably throw down the Acolyte at this point, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, well, maybe save it. Just death bite, go face with it, mm -hmm. um, and then save it for next turn to try and draw into something. What now? Uh, but uh, this isn't actually that strong of a play. He can death bite here, but both of his his executes very reactive. Mm -hmm. He wants to get rid of that charge so he can set up for either Gromish, his Acolyte of Pain, or the execute the following turn. But other than that, he's just going to be trading, really. Yeah. Actually, he might use the execute now just to keep that scenario alive. That seems reasonable. Oh, that's what it looks like he's thinking about doing. Weapon down the BGH, deal five to the face. Yeah, yeah, he does throw it out. Yeah. Might as well. Be the keeper on that, oh well. That's four mana that he's not using to like heal up or Yeah, yeah. And Trump ever respectful of the potential Harrison play or something mm -hmm. to punish him putting on the death spite. Got a wild growth. Yeah, you have to wild growth and see where that leads you. You have to think, what card could that be in his hand? He's had that card for a long time. You know, it's not Gromash because it would have already been played. Mm -hmm. Can probably deduct that it's a weapon. Can you? I think so. I think that's a pretty impressive read. I think it's a read that I might be able to make. <laughs> All right. I like it. The self-confidence. There's a lot of weapons. All right. Well, and uh, usually a warrior won't hold on to a card like that for that long. <laughs> well, Trump does manage to get the win, <laughs> even with the second death bite. Yeah. All right, Trump going up 2-0. And now he's going to have three games to find the win with the Paladin. Yeah, and that shouldn't be too difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, the one poor matchup is against the Rogue. Um, Roger also has uh, Warlock and Druid. 
So, I mean, Paladin can find wins against Warlock and Druid relatively easily. We've mm -hmm. seen that all day today. Yeah. Paladins have been preying on the Druids and the Warlocks. Um, so, Roger just has to say, <laughs> I need to pick up wins with these bad matchups. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. It's really hard. Yep, it absolutely is. So we'll see which one he's going to go with. What one do you think is the most likely to keep him alive now and just get him to game four? Rogue is the most likely to keep him alive, but Roger doesn't seem like that kind of guy that just goes with what's going to keep him alive. Mm -hmm. He said, I know i got to win with Druid. Might as well just throw it out. I know i got to win with Warlock. Might as well throw it out. Okay. Um, Trump, though, he's got to be so happy that he took a win with Warrior. Over oh, absolutely. Because he was trying... You could see in his face when he saw the Druid, he's like, oh, he's geez, like, here oh, we great. go. Yeah. And he was trying to dodge that matchup. That's the reason why he picked Warrior, because he was expecting something else. Right. And he actually does go. He, Roger does go with the Rogue, so All trying right. to keep himself alive, not give Trump the, the satisfaction <laughs> yes. of an easy 3-0. Absolutely, which always, I mean, there's really no such thing as a moral victory. If mm -hmm. you lost, you lost. Yeah. I, I guess so. Uh, maybe there is such a thing as a moral victory. It's like, you know, you can't win them all, but you also shouldn't lose them all. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> you know? that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> so I at least want to go out 3-1. Okay, right, guys. right. Tell all his right. teammates, you lost to Trump 3-0? Mm. <laughs> no, it was 3-1. Thank you very much. Yes, let's be fair. I played Rogue. No, but we can't, we can't count him out yet. Um, even though those matchups later on will be a little bit rougher for him. We've seen players come back from 2-0 in Conquest. And we saw a couple of them happen week one of Legendary Series. Uh, those comebacks do exist. Mm -hmm. So the best way to do it is to start it off, get that momentum going, play the deck you think is going to be the strongest, try and hit your stride. Yeah. That's exactly what Roger's going to try and do. All right. So Trump's already got the shielded mini bot, the juggler. And, uh, yeah, Roger's just going to keep the farce here. Whoa. That's an okay okay hand so far. Yeah. Um, minion heavy is the way to go here. Uh, if you have a fan of knives in your opening hand, as a rogue, you want to keep it. Oh, yeah, it's against the mustard. Yeah. Definitely don't want to get that mustard all over your shirt. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> fan of knives is the way to prevent fan that. <laughs> all right, and I like this play. Right now, he's got the second knife juggler as uh, well, so he's just kind of like, all right, if you got backstab, mm -hmm. fair enough, you got backstab. Yeah. You know, I've got another one of these right where that came from, if you do. Yeah. He's actually going to eviscerate it, which is eviscerate. a wise choice. Yeah. Otherwise, when is you ever going to kill a knife juggler? If he right. plays muster for battle the next turn, all right, I guess he coined it out. Mm -hmm. He plays anything the next turn. <laughs> yeah, just about. <laughs> You're going to be punished for that, so... Uh, I mean, he sees the eviscerate, so now he can play the second knife juggler right. and be confident that. Well, he's like, all right, so there's a two in twenty-four <laughs> chance, so a one in twelve that he gets the yeah. backstab off the top. If you had to Although eviscerate it, off the top to kill my last knife juggler, right. means you probably don't have a deadly poison. Means means a lot. Yeah. And then he just plays the earthen ring just for the three-three body as well. Mm -hmm. He really wants to trade into it. Yeah, but I think at this point trading into it is kind of doing Roger's work for him. Exactly, yeah. You know, uh, Roger's probably just going to wind up equipping a dagger mm -hmm. or something here. Although it is coming to turn four. He's got both Violet Teachers. Uh, yeah, this is... He has a Violet Teacher, but then he can't clear anything. Right. And he's going to get two juggles. Shielded mini bot. Mm-hmm. All right. Most likely, this violet teacher is going to go down. All right. We'll see. We'll see how accurate the knife juggler can throw those knives. If he gets, he dares you to put an apple on your head. So he yeah. better be good. Hmm. I mean, he can trade into the uh, Earth Ring Farseer now to increase the likelihood that he gets juggles on the violet teacher. Mm-hmm. But that's really hopeful, really wishful thinking. Yeah, because then in order to trade with the Violet Teacher, they have to be perfect. Yeah. I mean, two 50-50s is better than two 33% mm -hmm. chances, but... He's going to try it. Yeah. Oh, oh the first oh. one's good. If the second one doesn't hit, he's in trouble. Oh. Oh. Both. 
both are good in Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Sly what? smile on his face. He's looking Almost at Almost even a look of a bit of shame, perhaps? Did he feel guilty for that one? I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you like that violent teacher? And I, he was also looking, I think, over at uh, their Skype window. We talked earlier. They can see each other. Right, right. And he was saying, probably looking to see Ryder's reaction, like, sorry, buddy. <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. And a nice sludge belcher. Right on time here. Yep. This is uh, looking pretty good for Trump right now. But, of course, Rogue, this matchup is really great for them. There's lots of big swing plays that they can make. Sure. I mean, he's got the Tinkers in hand. He's also yeah. got a Sprint, which like, he'll be able to. Okay. Like, Violet Teacher Sap here is such a strong play. Yeah. Because you're putting Violet Teacher on the board, allowing your pile to shred it. Ooh. Is he going to prep Sprint? I If he does, I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. Um... Because Violet Teacher is just so hard for Paladin to deal with. Right. Um, and you're buying yourself so much time. You can, If your Violet Teacher leaves, you prep Sprint next turn, you're getting yourself two tokens as well as the four cards that you're drawing. So of course, yeah. Violet Teacher Sap I like a lot more. But Oh, I mean, he wants to, though. Maybe he's hoping he draws into something else. Maybe he's planning on sapping it anyway. Right. There's a fan of knives. All right, yeah. So he gets some some really high impact cards here. Well, and he chooses to take it down. Oh, 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 oh. that's not what you want to see. That's actually terrible because yep. if he uses oil later on, it goes on yeah, the ancient watcher. Right. Useless. Yeah, and Trump's gonna know that. He's just gonna let that ancient watcher live all the rest of this match. Yeah, unless he's forced into some sort of a consecration equality play. Mm -hmm. Let's play Black Knight here. Sure. Look, he's 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 at 11 health. Oh boy. I mean, he's only got one dagger charge. He doesn't have a huge AOE. He's got a yeah. little bit of AOE. Okay. Yeah. This uh, this looks. Let's see. So yeah, he's starting with the backstab. Okay. Useless draw. Yeah. He's the last one. Right. He can SI agent and dagger. Yeah. But so then he's got five damage facing him on the board. He's at ten health. Wow. All right. Well, now the onus is on Trump to just seal the deal here. Just quartermaster. Yeah. Hero power. Just hero power quartermaster. Just put more more pressure, more bodies on the board. Yeah. And Roger still hasn't found a blade flurry. You know, he hasn't had a good opportunity to lay down. Uh, he just picked up the Azure Drake after the sprint, so he hasn't mm -hmm. really been able to lay down any spell power before he uses, like, Fana Knives for AoE. It's going to be really, really difficult for him to deal with. Yeah. I mean, at that point, Trump's at, like, a top deck for a true silver champion mm -hmm. to lethal with no board. Yeah. Backstab's a good draw. He can, he can clear... No, he can't, actually. Yeah, this is rough. Got to see what you get from the Azure. He needs prep. No, I don't know if there's any outs. Uh, fan of knives. Yeah, fan of knives. Would fan do of it. knives would definitely help. I think second fan well, of knives might be his only out. Well, in this fan situation. of knives though, if he. Uh, Okay. He thinks he's got a way to keep himself alive one more turn. Huh? Um. Okay. Sap the quartermaster. Not the usual target. You no. want to uh, give back to the paladin yeah. when you haven't seen a muster for battle yet. Well, he's dead because there's yeah, a there's a consecration in hand. In hand. Oh. Wow. And he makes it even one step Trump. easier for Trump with the three zero. Wow. Trump with a 3-1 and then a 3-0 to start yeah. off his his run here at the Legendary Series. A really impressive day of Hearthstone all around for Trump. Yeah. Uh, I really like his deck choices coming into the day as well. Warrior was the one I was a little on the fence about. Uh, but right now, meta slower. You can get away with playing Warrior. Mm -hmm. And then Mech Mage and Paladin, I think, are two of the strongest classes. Uh, Paladin going up against a weaker matchup in Rogue. There's still some times where they can just 
put out so much pressure early on. The sure. Rogue can't deal with it. That's the way to beat right. the Rogue is pressure. And it was a little bit unfortunate. Roger, no answers to the knife jugglers early on. He just needed like a backstab or an SI agent or mm -hmm. something. Um, but uh, Trump did play exceptionally well. Yeah, he absolutely did. And he has just earned himself a spot into the semifinals tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are going to play both of the decider matches uh, from the group stages to finish that out before we get into the semifinals. So we're going to have Lemurian, once again, if you weren't watching earlier, the surprise winner of Group A, up against either Kalento or Tom. Mm -hmm. And Trump playing either Silent Storm or Roger. Yeah, so th this bracket shaped up to be uh, really impressive. And, I mean, the two invites had mixed performances. Kalento struggled a little bit, but brought it back in the second series. Trump dominating. Lemurian, probably the player that people knew the least about coming into this day, mm -hmm. had even more of an impressive performance than Trump, I'd say, in, in his run to the, to the, in his groups to the semifinals. Uh, but tomorrow's going to be really exciting. And yeah. The, the mix between the Battle of the Invites versus the Battle of the Challenger Cup, it's really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. I cannot wait to see tomorrow because even those elimination matches are just crazy stacked. Yeah. And then Lemurian looking at who he's got to have to play against to get into the grand final. How do you prepare for either of those players? Yeah. Kalento... As a, he's all of, uh, we said earlier, all of his information is like public. Yeah, you can see what Clento was playing 15 minutes ago. You can go online and people are already posting all of his deck lists. So his information is usually public, but it's still a really tough matchup. Nemurian has the side of the surprise factor side. Uh, you really don't know much about him coming into this. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, Clento is just always hard to take down. Yeah, and absolutely. then of course Clento uh, might not even be the player going on. So. Um, it was Kalento versus Tom. Right. He plays the winner of. Another BlizzCon player. Another BlizzCon player. He's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, he absolutely does. Well, it has been an incredible day of Hearthstone. Uh, just because the show is ending today doesn't mean the conversation has to end. Keep sending those tweets using the hashtag HLS at ESL Hearthstone. We'll keep the conversation going. I want to know what everybody at home thinks is going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be really possible to make very accurate predictions. This almost feels like one of these insane nope. college basketball bracket challenges. Yeah. Even though there's only, you know way less bracketology yeah. to worry about. Still, anybody's game tomorrow. And of course, we also want to give one last big shout out to our sponsors. That's Plantronics and Gigabyte. Thank you so much for making all this possible, for making this prize pool possible. And everybody at home, if you want to support HLS, the best way you can do that, besides just watching the show, is to check out these links below and maybe help yourself out improving your rig at home. Yeah, these guys are all getting money, going home with money today. Even the players that were eliminated just for making it through. And none of that would be spot, would be possible without the sponsors. And, uh, of course, we also do give away packs. That's right. ESL.gg slash legendary giveaway. You can see the link below right now. You can still sign up. There's still headsets to be won, packs to be won. TJ, we all know how partial you are to classic packs. Warming up my clicking finger. <laughs> yes. That's always the, that's the mini game of opening up packs yeah. is how quickly can you micro. Yeah. To Sometimes get I like to open. like savor it nice and slow. Just look at every card. Mm -hmm. See mouse the glow over with the border. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Any final words before we call it a night until tomorrow? No. We we talked about earlier in the day. This these two groups were stacked. Yeah. Um, a lot of these players very impressive. Uh, we had mixed results between the invites, the Challenger Cup. Uh, but I mean, I'm really excited to see any of the six players that we're going to see tomorrow at the land final. So it's going to be a really exciting day. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We can't wait to see you tomorrow and have a great night.